A famous name in the Torah is the name of Chanoich. Chanoich is generally or loosely translated into English as Enoch. There are two Chanochs in the uh, first portion of the Torah in Genesis. One is Chanoich, the son of Cain. Cain was the one that killed Hevel. Chaim was the infamous individual that brought murder to the world. And seeing the mistake that he did, he had a child and he called him Chanoich, which means education. And furthermore, it says he named a city after his son Chanoich. Because realizing that the opposite of destruction is construction. And therefore, to do tshuva, to repent for bringing death to the world and destruction to the world, he now wanted to build the world and to construct the world in a positive way. Another Chanoich was the seventh from Shais. Shais being the son of Adam and, and Eve, Adam and Chava. So, Chanoich was the seventh, rather, from Adam, from Adam. And he was a very, very holy tzaddik. The Torah tells us that he was no longer there, for God had taken him. The Torah in the Tractate of Chulin, page 60, side A, tells us that Chanoich zem etatren duhu sar ha'olam. Who was Chanoch? Chanoch is known as the angel Metatron. We call him Matat. And he is called the minister of the entire world. What is the job of Matat? So it says that he sews shoes and sandals. And by doing so, he makes Yehudim. He makes unifications up in the higher worlds, similar to the Yehudim, to the unifications that are performed through one who puts on tefillin. On tefillin we also have knots that are made out of leather. And this binds God to the soul and the mind and heart of man. And so, Angel Matat creates these knots, these Yehudim, these unities and unifications between these these mitzvos that a person does and Almighty God. And more explicitly it says that Malach Matat, he is the one that puts the crowns on the prayers of the Jewish people. Because when we pray, sometimes the prayer is not so clear if we didn't pronounce the word properly. Sometimes we did not pray with enough emotion and enough heart. So Angel Matat polishes these words and he puts onto these words the crowns and then he brings these words before God. The idea of a crown on a word represents a rotzoin, represents will and pleasure. And that is he creates a divine will in God to accept our prayers. And therefore he is Mavasar Toiv. He is the one that brings good news to the Jewish people from God that your prayers have been answered. What is the gematria of Chanoich? So rather than talking about the gematria of Chanoich, I'd rather talk about the gematria of Matatrin because of the fact that Chanoich became Matatrin. So Rashi tells us explicitly that Metatrin is the same as the name of his teacher, which is Almighty God, and that is the name of God, which is Shin Dalit Yud Shaddai. What is the concept of Shaddai? The word Dai 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 means enough, 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 similar to the song of Dayenu that we sing on Passover. When God created the world, He said Dai Dai Dai. He got to hold back the energy, you got to hold back the light because if we would create the world or God would create the world with his full eminence and his full glory the world would not be a finite world as it is today 
So therefore, one of the names that God used to create the world is the name of Shindal Yud, which brings a limitation to this aura and a limitation to this light. And similarly, the job of Matat is to be the minister of the world that was created through the letters of Shindal Yud, and that is the Gematria of 314. What is the Pasuk of Hanoich? The Pasuk of Hanoich is from Tehillim, Psalms 119, verse 62. Over there it says, It says that I get up in the middle of the night to praise you, Almighty God, on the laws of your righteous Torah. So here we see that Hanoich is directly connected with the teachings of the Torah. Not only does one who is Hanoich study Torah during the day, but also during the night. And from here we see the power of a Jewish education. That our job is not only to become rabbis and teachers, but even if you are like Matat, who is a sandler, who takes leather, and has the ability to make great unifications with this leather. This teaches us that whatever a Jew does, whatever a person does, in any field that he finds himself, his job is to connect heaven and earth together. And furthermore, by giving your child a Jewish education, not only will you live a life of happiness and ethics and values, but by giving your child a Jewish education, you have the ability to become Sar Ha'ilam. You become the master of the universe. That the way you study Torah and the way you perform mitzvahs, this will guide the world and bring direction to the entire world. This is also the meaning of the letters of Chanoich. Ches, Nun, Vav, Chaf. So the letter of Ches alludes to the first letter of Chanoich. The most powerful letter of the word is chinuch, education. What does education mean? Education means nun. Nun is the second letter of chanoich, which has the gematria of 50. 50 represents the 50 levels of bina, nun, shari bina, the 50 gates of understanding. So an educator has to learn the 50 levels of understanding which is found in the Torah. And then the Vav is like a ladder and a shoot. He has to bring down these levels of intellect and understanding in Torah down to the lowest levels. Even a little child that studies Torah should have a profound understanding of the Torah. Furthermore, you have the Langechaf, the elongated Chaf, which is the final Chaf in the word of Hanoich, implying that the education should not only be to good children and healthy children, but even to one that has gone outside of the baseline, one that is a rebel and has violated the Torah, even these children and even these students have a right and have an obligation to study the Torah. And therefore one who is truly an educator, and one who is truly a good teacher and a rabbi, and one who is truly a good father and mother, has the ability to bring down these 50 levels of understanding not only to the average person and the average child but even to the individual that seems to run away from the Torah and seems to have violated the Torah even that child and that individual has a place in the Torah and truly yearns for Torah and therefore your obligation is to connect that individual back to the Torah. I met a fellow in my synagogue in a few months ago and uh, we began to talk and he says, you know, because of your grandfather, Rabbi J.J. Hecht, I went to yeshiva. I said, what do you mean? He says, my mother came from Europe, she was living in the Bronx, and she sent me to public school. And she was listening to the radio, WEVD, and she hears Rabbi Hecht, your grandfather, speaking on the radio. And your grandfather says a Yiddish boy and a Yiddish girl, a Jewish boy and a girl, has to have a kosher chinuch, has to have a kosher education, 
And therefore you have to set him to a yeshiva, a good yeshiva, where the boy and girl will study Torah. And therefore by studying Torah, you'll be able to have the knowledge of God and live your life based on Torah and mitzvahs and live a happy life and a healthy life. And because of this he said that my mother right away took me out of public school and she put me into yeshiva and Baruch Hashem today. He is a uh, God-fearing Jew with a, with a large family, beautiful children, and he has a, a beautiful job. He makes a good parnasa for his family. So this is the concept of chinuch, chanoich, to be one that constructs the world, and one that brings positive influence to the world, and one that is knowledgeable and is educated. And not only is he educated in Torah, but he has the ability to take this education and bring it down into all levels and spheres of reality to impact the world in a positive way.